Hey guys, I'm back. Welcome to this very special preview of my brand new review center. I'm calling it a command center. I don't know if that's going to stick or not, we'll see. Uh, but it's a preview because it's not entirely finished yet. Which is why I haven't like done a tour of it or anything. And why the lighting is kind of garbage. I'm still experimenting with the lighting in here too. But this is roughly where our reviews are going to happen from now on. I'm very excited about it. My last review space was just my bedroom and the space before that was just a utility room where I stored some of my collectibles. This is actually a space dedicated to content on my channel. That means that while it will be a bit of trial and error learning how best to utilize this space, I am learning and if you guys have any pointers I guess would be the best word for it, I'd be happy to hear them. This is going to be a much more productive space for me, and therefore you can expect my channel to start being more productive again, something that I'm very excited about. And right now I can't think of any better use for my new review space than talking about Keepo in the Age of Wonder Beasts Season 2, which dropped fairly recently on Netflix. It dropped just before I started my move, I think I don't entirely remember at this point, but... Due to my move, I wasn't really able to talk about it when it first came out. I want to do that now, because I had a lot of fun watching the first season. I had a lot of fun with the second season, too. Although, I did have a couple of problems with it as well. Which, which... I'm sure hearing me complain about the show a little bit is going to be fun for you guys. That's a lie, I'm not sure of that at all. I don't know how much people actually liked this season of the show. That said, I would like to refer you back to my review of the first season, if you haven't seen that yet. And go and watch it so you can understand where I'm coming from when forming these opinions. Uh, real quick though, uh, for those of you who haven't seen the show, the premise is as of the first season, a girl named Kipa was trying to find an underground burrow where she believed her people to now be residing since their burrow was destroyed by a mega mutant, a giant monkey. So she goes into the Fallout-esque, post-apocalyptic upper world full of horrible mutated creatures, regular mutants that just have human-like intelligence, but the bodies of animals, usually larger than usual in the case of the really small ones, as well as mega mutants, which don't seem to be as intelligent on average, but are just massive and have extra limbs, and are basically unstoppable. And the show is all about how Kipo, someone who hasn't been jaded by life on the surface, is able to take the surface by storm with her positive attitude and her ability to connect with others, usually through music. This show has some fantastic music in it. Or at least the first season did. The music didn't hit me quite as hard in the second season, which is not to say it was bad by any stretch, it was just usually more of the same, or I think music that was good, but not as good as the music was on average in season one. So that's kind of my first criticism. I think the score wasn't as good for season two as it was for season one. Again, I have no idea how people felt about this season of the show. I don't know if that's going to be a controversial take or not. I certainly hope it's not, because if that's controversial, then y'all are going to hate some of the things I have to say later on. Hopefully not too much, though, because I want to say right out the gate, I did enjoy Season 2 quite a lot. I still consider this a positive viewing experience for me, and I can't wait until Season 3. This show's still really stinking good. I think the main issue I had with Season 2, really, is that I thought Season 1 of this show was basically flawless and season two didn't feel like that to me it felt like it had a couple of problems and even though the dip in quality isn't that great it's not really any greater than the dip in quality between any two seasons of a good show the fact that season one felt so close to perfect the few deficiencies that i found in season two stand out all the more season two and to go over the basic premise very briefly, features Kipo and her friends now once again trying to find Kipo's people as 
she has found them, but now they've been taken by the villain of the series, or at least one of the villains of the series. We're introduced to a different group of villains, aside from the villain who'd been set up as of this season. And meanwhile, while she's trying to find them and free them from this person, a mutated ape of some kind... I should remember what he is, but I can't remember. It doesn't matter. I'll put a picture of him up. I'm sure you guys will be able to tell what he is. And then I'll look like a complete idiot. I can, I can see him in my head. I should be able to tell. Again, it doesn't matter. But as she's trying to once again find them, she's also trying to get the hang of a superpower that she's discovered she has. Kipo is a human who has the ability to transform herself to possess the traits of an animal. Specifically, she can transform to possess the traits of a jaguar, a big purple jaguar. And while this is not a fault of the season itself, I really hate how Netflix promoted the show. The promotional images for season two that started going up in their bumpers prior to its release showed Kipo in her full mutant jaguar form. And granted, that's not even her final form, but that's the form that she spent the majority of this season learning how to control so that it would be a big deal when she finally became it and they just spoiled it in the promotional imagery it was really freaking annoying but it doesn't really detract from the drama of the season so it's okay and it's just a nitpick it's more a complaint about netflix as i said than about the show itself one thing i will criticize the show itself for though and this is going to sound like a really silly criticism, especially coming from me. But this show set itself up too well. Like, I legitimately planned to do some Kipo theories. I never got around to doing them. But I genuinely intended to. And straight up, every single one of them would have been practically spot on. That's how well the show set up its mysteries and payoffs. And while on one hand I really love that, obviously that's the kind of thing I really love in kids shows i love it when kids shows are engaging on an intellectual level like that especially for older viewers who might be watching along with young kids on the other hand when we finally got those reveals in the series because they'd been set up so well they weren't a surprise and there weren't very many additional little twists and turns snuck in there with them to make them more interesting at the moment of their reveal. Like, the identity and origin of the villain Scarlemagne didn't surprise me at all. There were a few fine details here or there to his story that I would say I didn't specifically see coming, but the broad strokes of it I had guessed at long before they were revealed. The fact that Kipo was some hybrid between a human and a mutant jaguar specifically also was telegraphed well enough that it didn't surprise me at all, and even the reveal that she could mutate further into a Mega Jaguar wasn't really all that surprising because of another reveal we'd gotten throughout the course of this season, which I would say is probably the biggest twist of the season, the identity of that Mega Monkey I talked about earlier in my summation of the first season. But even that twist in the context of season two they telegraphed it hard enough and well enough that I'd figured it out well before they revealed it to the characters, which set up some decent dramatic irony, but they didn't really do anything with it during that time between when the audience should have been able to piece together who the monkey was and the time when the characters learned of it as well. And like, sure, maybe the point of those little background mysteries isn't really to fool anybody. Maybe the show is not trying to surprise anybody. Maybe it's just trying to be a clever show with clever continuity, if that's the case. It's doing so spectacularly well. I just wish it went a tad deeper. Now, granted, we still don't know what caused the world to end up the way it is, not specifically. I will say that is one thing that I had theorized that I turned out to be wrong about. I thought that Kipo's parents were going to turn out to have been in some way responsible for mutes showing up in the first place, but it doesn't look like that's true. It looks like they were part of a team that was trying to turn mutes back into regular animals so that humanity could reclaim its place, 
which is even more interesting, I think. So there is still that mystery, but at the same time, that mystery hasn't really been set up at all. Like, the question lingers in the back of the viewer's mind, or at least it lingered in the back of mine as I was watching the show, but the show is pretty good at telegraphing when something is intended to be a mystery to be unraveled, and it hasn't really been doing that with the mystery of what happened to the world, so I don't even know if the narrative's ever going to deal with that. And if it doesn't, that would kind of bum me out. I also didn't quite like the specific direction they took with the origin of Kipo's powers. Like, this is going to dip into mild spoilers, and I apologize for that, but I have to get a little spoilery to talk about this. I had kind of assumed that Kipo had gotten her mutant powers by accident, and then her and her dad specifically, hid her away because he realized that those powers might be the means of uniting the remnants of humanity and the mutants on the surface, her being technically both. But it ended up being something different. I won't go into specific details, but her parents were far more responsible for her getting her powers than I thought it was going to turn out that they had been like, directly responsible, like they chose to do it, with the understanding that this would make Kipo a bridge between the two worlds, putting that responsibility on her before she had even been born, and I didn't like that. Like, maybe it's just because I'm coming off of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power, a show where those sorts of monumental expectations were placed on children all over the frickin' place, and the point of the show is to show, at least in many cases, how damaging those expectations could be, and maybe that's just not the point of this show. Maybe the intention is that Kipo is just the kind of person who can handle those kinds of expectations, and we're not supposed to think about it, but I'm thinking about it. And like, sure, Kipo definitely steps up. She definitely seems to accept that responsibility, but I can't help but wonder if she's doing so simply because she was raised to accept that kind of responsibility. Because she was effectively, I don't want to say indoctrinated because that sounds harsh, but indoctrinated <laughs> into being that kind of person by her father as she grew up. And I don't know if that's entirely fair to her. Kipo is effectively a chosen one hero. And while I don't hate Chosen One heroes in general, this one kind of annoyed me. Because this responsibility was placed on her literally before she was even a person. Before her parents had any idea of what kind of person she would be and what she'd be able to accomplish. They really lucked out that she turned out to be the kind of person who could shoulder all of this. Like, look at Scarlemagne, who... Again, I don't want to get too spoilery, but... He had a relationship of a type with Kipo's parents. They heaped a lot of responsibility on him, too. And when he reached a point where he made a mistake and wasn't able to handle that responsibility anymore, he crumpled and became the worst villain that the surface had ever seen. And he was little better than a child at the time. I just... In most Chosen One narratives, there's some divine force or some metaphysical force or magical force that selects this person and deems them worthy of this responsibility. In the case of this show, it's just some sciency people who were really desperate and didn't really have another choice. And like, there's no real one-to-one -one situation in the real world that this kind of thing compares to. Like, there is not going to be any one child who is expected to save the entire world in real life. But still, I think the rough real world equivalent to this kind of behavior from a parent would be very toxic and harmful and possibly even abusive. And I'm starting to worry that the show is just not going to treat this behavior that way. But if we do look at this as being its own kind of chosen one narrative story, I can overlook that. I have to squint a lot to do it, but I can overlook it. And once I overlook it, and once I get past the fact that this season didn't really surprise me in the ways that I expected it to, 
this is still a fantastic season of streaming television. Does it still count as television if it's not technically on television? Like, there is at least the implication this season that there's some mystical element to this world uh, through the introduction of a specific trio of mutes who I found very entertaining. The introduction of the second villain group and the reveal of how they were connected with Kipo and her family was very interesting to me, and I'm super excited to see more of them later on. And the specific direction they took Scarlemagne as a character is something that I didn't expect, honestly. Like, I expected the gist of what his backstory turned out to be, but his specific character journey was super interesting. And while not as much focus was placed on the development of some of the other characters aside from Kipo this season as was in season one, the characters still developed a lot this season. Wolf, in particular, really grew into her own this season. She's still the best character in the show, so I really enjoyed that. And regardless of how Kipo became the hero that she is, she's still a pretty great hero. Though I have to say, I kind of preferred Kipo back when she couldn't fight and had to solve her problems without the ability to actually be a physical threat. But, I mean, that was never going to last, so it's fine, whatever. And her mute form, even her, like, half-mute form, is super cool. She has, like, multiple stages to her transformation. It's, like, straight out of anime. And even if I didn't think the score and the soundtrack this season were as great as in Season 1, which is entirely subjective, by the way, if you guys liked Season 2's score and soundtrack better than great, I'm super happy for you. This show still looks and sounds great. Like, I've focused on my criticisms primarily in this review, as I always do, because they're more fun to talk about. But I want to stress very, very emphatically, this is still a fantastic season of television. I wouldn't be nitpicking it as much as I am if I didn't think it was great enough that it deserved to be talked about in detail. And I will say straight up, some of the best stuff about this season, like Wolf's specific backstory, like we got some of her backstory in season one, but the rest of her backstory was great, and I can't talk about it in detail without spoiling some of the best stuff about the show, so I, all I can say is that it's great. All I can say is that, yes, I criticize this season more than I criticize season one, but this is still definitely a show you should watch. Oh, also Benson continues to be just the most adorable person, and his budding relationship with one of the guys from... Kipo's burrow is so cute. Like, the two of them have, like, multiple meet-cutes throughout this and the previous season, and it gets maybe a little repetitive after a while, but they still have a genuinely cute dynamic. So it's a lot of fun to see it. Oh, and one of the things I did criticize in Season 1, a specific character who, again, I can't talk about them in detail of how spoilery it is, but just go back and watch my review of season one if you want to know who I'm talking about, assuming you've seen the show. There was a character specifically from season one whose role in the season I didn't like. I just didn't like his story at all. I didn't like him as an antagonist. I didn't like how they seemingly made friends with him. I mean, that was pretty much all that Kipo did with her enemies in season one was made, made friends with them. But I didn't like how she made friends with this guy. <sighs> because he seemed like he was just... Too... What's even the word? Nonchalantly terrible. And also, he was so freaking powerful. I didn't see how... If he... Didn't turn out to be reformed... They could ever stop him. But, that character... They make such great use of him in Season 2. In, Kipo specifically makes such great use of him in Season 2. Calling him in and calling in a favor and getting him to help out in specifically the right situations for a character like him to help out and be most effective. Showing that she's not just a kind person. She's not just a increasingly physically capable person. But she's also incredibly smart. I liked that a lot. It showed a new dynamic to her character, which, like, you can infer that she's intelligent, 
from the way that she's able to relate to people, but she showed a form of tactical intelligence that we hadn't seen from her yet, which fit perfectly with her character. And I thought, really expanded the possibilities for how this character could be written going forward. Let's put it that way. Again, though, despite what criticism I have levied against this season, it's a fantastic season of television. Kipo is still a great show. I'm really looking forward to season three. As per usual, though, guys, what do you think of Kipo and the Age of Wonder Beasts? If you have seen it, both seasons, you can talk about both of them. Just keep any spoilers under a spoiler, if possible, down in the comment section down below or over my Discord, link in the description. But either way, this has been AJ22 coming at you from my new command center. And I'll talk to you guys later.